Here comes a helicopter with the men on board that will bring in the raft. And there goes the swimmer with the raft. Michael Charlton in Houston. What's the atmosphere in mission control at this point? Well, I leave it to your imagination, Jim. <laughs> Obviously, people are tremendously relieved that it's all over and uh, everything's starting to, to, to run down here and never more thankfully have things been, been run down. That, that last call, mission control, you, you probably heard just at re-entry time when they completed their final checks and said, and welcome home. I don't think words have ever been uttered more fervently than those from a, from a place like this, despite all the space missions that they've flown. So a lot of terribly tired and weary people uh, are standing around in mission control with uh, their arms about each other. And, and I think you probably heard during the, the last um, stages of, of the flight, um, when they hit the water, uh, the burst of applause and cheering that broke out from mission control. And I haven't seen that since the successful landing on the moon by Neil Armstrong's flight, which produced a similar sort of excited reaction. Everybody, but, uh, everybody here was jumping up and down too, Mike. <laughs> well, very good. I'm glad to hear it. But um, the little limb, we, have, we've, we haven't uh, uh, heard much about that. That presumably has ended its life altogether now. We heard a, a, a final call from Jim Lovell of she was a good ship. And so she was. It was a little lunar module that saved their lives and kept them alive for almost a week. And uh, that's, that's either re-entered now or, or about to. But uh, spare a thought for that little bit of complicated metal up there, which uh, saved the lives of three of these American astronauts who shortly we should be able to see getting out of Apollo 13 some three days earlier than they were meant to, but safely at the end of the most hazardous space flight yet. And there goes the final swimmer into the water. I would guess it's Ernie Jenke, the man who's responsible for opening the hatch, passing in the overalls, getting the crew out of Odyssey. Of course, anything being passed into them on this particular occasion would be for merely hygienic purposes. If he passes in overalls, it'll be simply to give him a change of clothing. And he may not even do that, we hear, because don't forget that these men will not go through the quarantine proceedings. They will not come out wearing masks and they will not go into the quarantine facility in which the astronauts of Apollo 11 and Apollo 12 live because these men unfortunately tragically in a sense for Jim Lovell because this is his last flight these men did not get to the surface of the moon and there comes the net the Billy Pugh net as it's called named after the man who designed it a bosun in the in the Navy the rescue net coming down there to pick up the first astronaut is open and I would guess the first one out would be Swigert if he's sitting in the command module seat it's a big man it looks like Swigert Jim Lovell being in the Navy, he'll be the last man out. He's no doubt about that. Two out, one to go. And there, without any doubt, I'm sure, is Jim Lovell coming out. A U.S. Navy captain like him would not leave his ship first. All three astronauts now in the egress raft. A quick check through the astronauts to make sure nothing's been left behind. And now they're closing the hatch. Waiting now for the helicopter to drop the net to pick up the astronauts one at a time. Three swimmers there you see just off this side of the raft just in case one of the astronauts does happen to fall out of the net. Here comes a helicopter. You can see the effect of its rotors there stirring up the water. And you can just see the net coming down there. The first astronaut is climbing aboard. Uh, the signal has been 
given ready for lift. First astronaut is on his way up. Excellent pickup, no oscillation. First astronaut up. First astronaut is halfway up. By his size in that net, he looks like the five foot and eleven and a half length of Jack Swagger. He's the tallest man on board. There goes the net again. Fred Hayes, the first one in. Fred Hayes. Nuna module pilot, Fred Hayes, first in. Second astronaut is in. The third astronaut is climbing aboard. The thumbs up, ready for lift. It must be some considerable consolation to Lavo. He didn't make it to the moon, but at least he made it back alive. To the level there. And his last ride up. Sixty-six now ready to swing round. Report there from the helicopter that Lovell's on board and he feels fine. I bet he does. The astronauts on board the helicopter moving back now towards the Iwo Jima. Mission control there watching as we are. Helicopter 66, touchdown on the deck of the carrier. Air crew support running out there to put the chocks under the wheels of the helicopter. They'll be followed shortly by the crew coming up with the ladder. Here come the steps. First man usually to greet them is a representative of NASA. And here they come. James Lovell, John Swigert, and Fred Hayes. Looks like the Admiral commanding the Pacific Fleet there, and there's Captain Lee Kirkamo, the captain of the Iwo Jima, shaking hands with Lovell. I would uh, like to ask the uh, captain to say a brief prayer of thanks. Let us pray. The Lord, we joyfully welcome back to Earth astronauts Lovell, Hayes, and Swigert, who, by your grace, their skill, and the skill of many men, survived the dangers encountered in their mission and return to us safe and whole. We offer our humble thanksgiving for this successful recovery. Amen. Captain Novel, Fred Hayes, John Swaggart. Astronauts moving away there. Jim Lovell almost nonchalant as he walks down the red carpet towards the shower, a rest, and a medical examination. <laughs>